Hello and welcome to yet another episode on History Time. A couple of episodes ago, I had asked this question about a locality of Chennai, which takes its name from a commercial organization that has been operating from the same place for over 200 years. Lots of people sent me messages. Some have also dropped their answers in the comment section of the videos. And almost all of them got the answer right. That is Parry and Company, which gave its name to Parry's Corner. Today, we'll be looking at this historic entity and as to how it has survived for so long. These are days when if a corporate entity completes five years, it's considered a matter of great celebration. Then we have silver jubilees, golden jubilees, diamond jubilees, centenaries. But what if a company has been in operation from 1789? That is truly a great record and that record belongs to Parry and Company. The founder, Thomas Parry, was born in 1768 in Wales in the United Kingdom. And when he was 20, he embarked for India. He arrived here in 1788 to Fort St. George, established himself as a free merchant, a term that requires some explanation. After all, all the commercial activities at that time were under the control of the East India Company. But because the company servants did not get much of a salary, they all indulged in what was known as private trade, business on their own. This was technically forbidden. And in order to ensure that their businesses prospered, they brought their relatives from England and settled them here as free merchants. Thomas Parry came here courtesy his kinsman, Patrick Ross, who was an engineer with the East India Company. Having come here, Parry began in banking, in cotton and in cloth. He was also lending money to various people on interest. Gradually, he took on partners and in initial days, the company was known as Chase, Parry and Company. Incidentally, the commercial entity which Parry founded began in 1789. And initially, it was Chase, Parry and Company. And then gradually, it became Parry, Pew and Company, Parry, Pew, Braithopt and Company and so on depending upon who were the other partners. The name Parry, however, remained a constant. Interestingly, Pew, Braithopt, all of them would have roads commemorating themselves in Madras. Pew's road is just off Shamir's road. And because it is spelt P-U-G-H, it became Pug's Road in Tamil and finally Bug's Road in English. Braithopt Road is today Bretapet Road in Veperi all of them commemorating partners of Parry and Company. It's ironic that those partners had roads to themselves and then vanished over time, nobody remembers them. But Parry remains the one constant. Thomas Parry in 1803 was advised by Governor Edward Lord Clive that commercial entities would no longer find a space inside Fort St. George and they had to move out. Parry then began to look for land in which to establish his company. And he identified a piece of no man's land to the north of the fort. Today, if you walk out of the fort and begin going northwards, you will come to the High Court. Then you will come to NSC Bose Road. Then you come to Parry's Corner, Rajaji Saleh or First Line Beach, Royapuram and so on. But in Parry's time, there was no High Court. There was no NSC Bose Road. It was all no man's land. Parry identified a spot by the corner, by the sea, where nobody went. That was the northern limit of the city. And that place became Parry's Corner. There was no harbour at that time as well. And the sea came and practically lapped the walls of Parry and Company. And therefore, because he had selected that spot, it became Parry's Corner, a name that survives even today. Seeing the success of Parry and Company over there, gradually other commercial entities began to found their offices to the north of Parry, all along what became First Line Beach or Rajaji Saleh. The harbour came up in 1875 
and then the sea began to recede and today that place is no longer a corner, but the name Paris Corner has remained. So, that again is a record going back 219 years or so. Next, we come to the businesses that Parry founded. Parry started off, as I said, in lending, in cotton cloth, in various things. He dabbled in this, that and sundry. Finally, in 1807, he took over a failing business to which he had lent money and that was to distill sugar from sugar cane and that became the main activity of Parry and Company in Kadalur. Can you believe it? The company is still in the same business and it is one of the biggest sugarcane crushing entities of India. Parry, in consequence of his business, would keep travelling to various parts of South India. He had married Mary Pierce, a widow over here. They had two children, but the marriage was not a very big success. Mrs. Parry went back to England with her two children. Thomas Parry was never to go back. He was travelling in the Kadalur area in 1824 when he was struck by cholera and he died there. He was buried in the Christ Church in that town and later a monument for him was erected in St. George's Cathedral, Madras. After Parry passed away, his fellow director J. W. Dare took on the company and made it a very big commercial success. By the 1840s, the company had got further and further into sugar production. And then in the 1890s, it started a company called East India Distilleries, which is why we have the initials EID. Most people today will recognize the company as EID Parry. And that is because of that distillery unit that the company began. In 1907, Parry established yet another record. It became the first company of India to produce fertilizers. And that was in Ranipet. Production of fertilizers required sulfuric acid and for storing sulfuric acid the company needed ceramic jars and that is when they got into their ceramic division. The ceramic jars that they produced for storing their acid became so popular that people began to use it for making storing pickles, salt and other condiments. And what are those ceramic jars? Here I have an example for you. This is a jar made by Parry and Company more than a hundred years ago. The ceramics division in turn would expand and get into sanitary fittings for bathrooms and toilets. And that was the name in which Parry became very successful later before it finally sold that division. But for people of my generation, the best sweets that were made by Parry's confectionery division. That division too has since been sold and Parry continues to remain in sugar crushing, in sugar production, in fertilizers and several other activities. India became independent in 1947 and thereafter the company began to Indianize. In 1955, it had its first Indian chairman C. R. Srinivasan who was the chairman and the editor of the Tamil newspaper Swadesa Mitran and after him a series of Indian chairmen began to hold fort. In 1981, the company became a part of the historic Murugappa group under whose management it still continues to flourish. Truly, Parry and Company is an organization that has created several records. Now, before I finish, I need to tell you about Dare House and I am sure that is what you are waiting for. In 1803, Parry began construction of the headquarters of his company at Parry's Corner. And thereafter, it remained a Palladian style structure for a very long period of time. In 1938, the company's directors decided they needed a modern building in keeping with the latest style of architecture, which was Art Deco, the style in which cinema theatres were being built all over the world. Ballardi, Thompson and Matthew, architects of Calcutta were invited and a new design was produced and the multi-storied building that we see was completed by 1940 at a cost of 12 lakhs. That was a record as well, 12 lakhs for a five-storied building and for constructing it within two years of time. 
it became a landmark. But as it happens very often in construction, Parry did not have money to finish it and they had to rent out parts of the premises to other tenants. When the building was completed and the tenants began moving in, the question arose as to what the new building ought to be called. The company wanted to call it Parry Buildings, but the tenant said, that means we'll be giving you free advertising on all our letterheads because our addresses will be carrying the name Parry Building. Think of something else. And then the company decided that the area is anyway Parry's Corner. So let's have the building named after the second director, J.W. Dare, which is how the building became Dare House. And even today, it remains a great landmark in that locality. Parry commemorating Thomas Parry, the founder, Dare House commemorating J.W. Dare, the second managing director of the company, and several records to its credit. If you are lucky enough ever to go to the top floor of the building, you will find a museum. And in that museum, there are several artifacts of the 200 plus years history of the company. And just outside the museum, there is a terrace. You step onto the terrace and you have a breathtaking view of Chennai city. Among the many icons of this city is Parry and Company. Let us wish it well and many years of prosperity. Thank you very much.